Ah, there we go. You guys should be able to hear me now. Hopefully you can. Um, I'm going to uh, cut the audio now or the music in the background. Look at that. Uh, so yeah, just wanted to uh, jump on here today, do another little coffee session. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you will be showing up today, but um, yeah, just uh, looking to uh, connect with all of you. And then also I'm going to share um, some things that I think we all could be working on, things that I'm working on right now. And I also just want to kind of see where, uh, where everyone's at right now and where Jamie V is in the house. What's up, my man? Long time no see. Glad to see you, brother. Uh, yeah, so it's funny, Jamie. I think the if you recall, the first time we met and we hung out for coffee was in Texas. Uh, I believe it was it Austin. No, it was Fort Worth. I believe it was. Uh, I think that's when it was. And I don't even think at that time you had launched your your first product yet and uh, and didn't even start your uh, online career as of uh, that time. So yeah, cool, man. Thanks for uh, jumping on. Uh, yeah, awesome. So guys, all we're going to do here today is I'm going to be here to connect with you guys, answer any questions. Uh, but uh, I'm going to also give you guys, uh, yeah, Jamie, yeah, almost five years ago. Isn't that nuts? It's crazy. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little fancy here today. And uh, let me get rid of that. And let's see how this will work. I'm going to share this is what I'm going to be talking about. And uh, I'm not going to leave that up much longer because I want it to be a surprise. Well, I just want you guys to go through it with me. So basically what we're going to be talking about today, at least I want to talk about today, are things that we can be doing right now in our business. Uh, and you know, things have changed, things have shifted in the last five years. And Jamie had just said, you know, it's been five years since um, he got started. And I mean, Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, a lot has changed, correct? Uh, and uh, I, I think uh, that we all know that, you know, markets change, uh, platforms change, uh, you know, products change, businesses change. But the cool thing is, is when you start to build a skill set, you really do uh, have something that no one can ever take from you. So I just want to be, um, I just want to, yeah, a whole different world, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Um, and so really what I want to talk about again today, and I'll talk about anything, but the thing that's really on my mind and in my focus and what I've really built, uh, you know, and really switched and kind of pivoted uh, TAS now is really about, uh, building a brand. Um, and whether that's a small niche site or a niche brand, or if it's a full out authority type brand, and you might ask like, what's the difference? Well, a niche site could be just really niche down. And all you're going to do is to just ever deliver just content and build up enough traffic to make a thousand bucks a month. And that's totally doable. You might want to also, add uh, an authority piece to it where you're going to build it bigger into a brand that's, whether it's a content site, whether it's a physical product brand or a combination of the both, um, if you're going to build it into something that potentially could be sold one day. Um, so there's a lot of different variables, but it does always come down with understanding your market and then from there, delivering value to that market. Um, and that's what I want to talk about here today and things that we're doing right now, things that we're seeing very, uh, very good results from. I also have a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a test that I ran the other day through email. And I wanted to share that with you. Um, we received a crazy number of clicks in an email who would say, well, isn't right now a bad time to send email? And the answer is no, it's not. It's actually a great time because you're showing up to your market without an agenda necessarily, right? You're, you're there to help them. You're there to serve them. Um, even if you're in the bass fishing niche, right? It's like right now it might be a time to touch base with those people and say, Hey, I know it's a tough time going on right now, but you know what? To get your mind off it, you should go catch some bass, right? Like go, go fishing. Um, and then give them a few tips. Um, but what I want to do here is I want to hear from you guys before we do get, uh, jumping in here. Uh, we've got a, Bunch of you on right now uh, in the first, uh, what, eight minutes here. So we've got over 20 of you coming on. Um, let me know. Do you have your coffee? Do you have your coffee? 
That I'm curious with, uh, to, to know a little bit more about. So let me know in the comments, do you have your coffee? Do you have your tea? Do you have your beverage? Or what is the beverage that you have with you right now? Because if you, um, if you are showing up, you know that I asked, that was one requirement. I need you to tell me what you're drinking. Um, right now today I am drinking bulletproof, <laughs> bulletproof coffee as uh, Troy had said, bulletproof time. That is correct. Um, so let me know in the comments. And maybe while we wait, we'll put a little music on. How about we do that? Kathy says, yes, bulletproof coffee. What's up, Kathy? Uh, cool. So glad that we're having similar coffee. You know, it's, it's cool. I, I like it that we're able to kind of have coffee because if we were really having coffee together in a coffee shop, we'd both be like, let's go order our coffee. Uh, oh, coffee black. We got here. We got a black coffee in the house. What's up, Sean? Uh, coffee black is, is good. Um, I don't know something about the bulletproof with just the butter and then whipping it up. It's delicious. And, um, it's done really well for me to, 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 uh, do the intermittent fasting as well. Uh, Helene can't do coffee, sparkling water for me. That's fine. Absolutely fine. Uh, let's see. Hey, Scott, I have a combo of liquids here. Chinese Olong tea or oolong tea, a very strong green drink that contains ginger, kale, carrots, apples, and celery, and a glass of water. Kim, you know, I had a bad experience with, uh, ginger in, um, one of the, uh, juicers, uh, that I had, um, or juices that I had, and it, it ruined juicing for me. Uh, whenever I think about juicing, I, I get that feeling of what I felt like. So that ginger really, really, uh, made my stomach not feel well. Uh, Robin water can't drink coffee. That's okay. Water's good. I'll be chasing this with a water, by the way. Uh, coffee, dash of sugar free hazelnut creamer. All right, Kate. All right, cool. So now that we got our coffee, um, and I love this that we're a that we're actually able to interact back and forth on uh, on these coffee calls uh, because I want it to feel as though we're having coffee together and we're just uh, we're just hanging out. So. Let me ask you guys, would you guys rather talk today uh, first about content creation to bring, to bring traffic to your business, or would you rather me uh, dive more into email marketing um, and those types of things? Um, I've got both areas that I can share in, but I'd like to know. Um, Kim, uh-oh, it's really strong. Takes <laughs> some getting used to. Yeah, I know. Uh, What's working for you when it comes to websites? Um, oh, okay. So I believe Jamie, that's a question for me. Um, okay. So as far as websites, do you mean Jamie, like what type of websites or what type of content sites or what type of websites that, that are being built that are bringing in traffic or revenue or both? Um, maybe a little bit more clarification on that as far as websites go. Um, I like it though. Uh, email marketing, Helene wants to talk about and chat about, uh, Robin content. Should we do something different? Give me some more on that, Robin, uh, about as far as doing something different. Now, Robin, I know that you're in brand creators Academy and I know that, uh, you are creating content and actually there's one piece of content that you created from a call that we recently were on, or that I actually did a deep dive for you and you're ranking now on page one for that piece of content. Um, so a little bit more clarification on that. And then I can help you on that strategy with content. Okay. That's a good one. And, and I do like it. So here's, here's my thoughts on this. And you know, it's funny because I have not done a good job with content as far as search intent. Um, I've always done it the other way up until about a year ago, a year and a half ago. And what I mean by that is, is when I started even back in the day when I was doing the photography stuff and I was building up an audience there, it was really about putting out content on YouTube, getting a subscriber base, getting them to my email list. And then I was marketing through my email list. I didn't care about search traffic on Google. So I never really built up a blog that was getting a significant amount of traffic. Now, um, since then, same thing. You think I would learn my lesson. I built up an audience with the podcast, which is not really search intent. Um, and I just created a website that would take 
and, uh, or I could take the episodes and then just use the website as a placeholder. That was it. And I would drive traffic there, but not with the search intent. Okay. So because of that, I'm paying the penalty in a sense that my website for the amazing seller doesn't really get as much traffic as you would think. And the reason is, is because when I write a subject line or a title for a podcast, I'm not necessarily thinking for Google. And so now we're starting to, after five years, by the way, we're starting to recognize that and we're starting to do a better job with that. Now, when it comes to building out a brand, I have a brand that I've been building with a partner for over three years now. And we did go down this road of building content and we're up over, uh, we're, we're between 150,000 and 250,000 monthly uh, sessions, okay? And we did over 2.2 million sessions last year. Um, and it's doing really, really well, but that has a lot to do with publishing content with the search intent in mind. So, um, I always, I always now moving forward am looking at how do we create content that can get searched for or can get found. And we call this evergreen content. And Jamie, I know you know about this, um, cause I know the project that you guys are working on you and you and rich. Um, so you get it, right? It's like, how do we go after these low hanging fruit keywords that are going to be found on the website? Then how do we build out other content that's more epic, that's more pillar posts? Um, and then from there, how do we create product-based posts? Um, I think that we need a mix of everything on that. And, and if you do that, okay, then you're going to be able to have search intent that's coming over that will be found for just information. And then from there, there's also places where people can purchase things through a product-based post. Um, so I'll dig more into that. I've actually got three different buckets that we always use. Um, and it's funny, I wanted to do this because I'm going to do a YouTube video on it. And I was hoping you guys could help me with some just questions that you guys have so I can make that a better YouTube video. Um, so um, yeah, so I'm going to dive into that. I got a little uh, sheet up here that I'm going to just take some notes myself, but I'm going to share my notes with you. Um, so let me go back here real quick. Um, yeah. Okay. So Jamie was talking about content. Yeah. Um, and from what I know, Jamie, you and Rich are doing a pretty good job. Um, so, okay. And then Robin said, same as Jamie strategy with it. Yeah. So strategy with it. All right. So let's, let's go into this real quick. Hey, hold on a minute. Kate says, if we want to put up content blog and podcast and eventually sell an online class, do we use WordPress? Um, the answer is yes. Um, I know there's a ton of different platforms out there guys, but I would 100% build my site on WordPress. It's the most available. It's the plugins that are out there for it are, are just, there's an abundance of them. There's a ton. Now you don't want to install them all, right? But you, there, the options are so so good out there, um, and they, you know, depending on your theme, which you can get themes built for them, or you can use a template. Um, I, um, I definitely, definitely think that um, it's really, really good to be able to uh, use WordPress when you're first starting, and then you can grow with it. Not the free one. Now it is free, but not the host self hosted one or I'm sorry, the hosted one that's on WordPress. Uh, I think it's .com. You want .org. You want to be able to install it on your host. Um, and uh, Jamie, what niche is that brand in? Uh, I'm not I'm not publicly uh, announcing that as of right now, um, but uh, I will probably be in the future. There is a niche that we're working on inside of Brand Creators Academy that is public inside of our, well, it's inside of our academy it is. Um, but I am going to be announcing that, Jamie. Uh, I just want to give myself a little bit of a head start on the one that we're building in the academy and then the one after that. Um, we also have another one. It was funny. My, um, my wife and I, we were just talking this morning. There's another one that we're going to start um, from scratch. Um, and, um, going through the same exact process that we do as far as niche selection, and then kind of going through the whole, does it have enough in the market to, uh, you know, to kind of throw, um, the net out there and, um, is there enough opportunity? Um, and so we are actually in the process and, um, yeah, so it's basically following that same process. And then Jamie says, yeah, WordPress is the best for content. Totally. 
Um, now you can always bolt on like WooCommerce for like selling physical products. You can also bolt on um, Shopify if you want to go down that route. I believe uh, WooCommerce could do just as good, um, but make it. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> Jamie says, yeah, be careful what you share. Yeah, that it is true, and. I have a partner in that other brand, so I don't want to jeopardize um, anything there. Um, so we're just going to kind of let that be. And um, I'm sure some people have found it or found the one that I'm attached to, um, but that's whatever. That's just when I, I want to minimize that. The one in the academy is, I mean, we have a, a smaller group of people in there, a couple hundred people, so I'm not worried about that as much. Um, so, uh, but yeah. Um, and then what do we got here? Oh, I got to go over top of the comments. I'm very new to the blogging world and I want to sell physical or, uh, I want to sell products through affiliate marketing. However, I don't want to come across a tone, uh, as tone deaf of what is going on in the world. I do just keep creating content that covers what I was going to write about anyway, and know that this too will pass. And therefore when the world is back up and running, I would be that much further along. Sorry, not very easy. Like, yeah. Oh, well, I kind of get what you're saying. Um, Kim is you're just writing like, you're kind of like what they call is like the old school blogging where it was just like, what's happening today, you're gonna write about it. Um, and that's okay, it just doesn't have this search intent, right? And so if there was one thing that I would stress is make sure that you validate your market. And um, I would definitely recommend, and I'm gonna give you guys a, a free resource. If you go to brandcreators.com, you're going to see a checklist there. It's about six pages and you can go through it. It'll help you, number one, find and validate your market, but then also see all of the opportunities before you actually get involved in that market. So it validates traffic, it validates products being sold, it validates uh, affiliate opportunities, all of that stuff in that little checklist um, and it's free. So I would recommend doing that. Uh, let me get back here to the comments. Um, and I want to know from you guys, are you guys currently right now creating, I know Jamie, you are, are you currently creating content on a regular basis right now? Um, so if you guys can let me know that, um, but it looks like guys, if you guys can vote on this for me, um, you can either do a C or an E. All right. C for content, E for email. Which one do you want me to talk about first? Um, about building your brand. Uh, let's do E for email, C for content. And uh, I'm gonna take a sip of coffee. Let's see what we get here. Uh, I'm waiting. Oh, I still had the, had the music. No, I didn't have the music on that whole time, did I? Uh, let's see. E, we got a first E, so it looks, um, okay, and Doug, Doug jumped in first. Yes, we are, 52-week um, challenge. I love it that, that uh, Doug keeps putting that in there. I did an episode, uh, let's see now, probably around two months ago, talking about the 52-week challenge, and it basically, uh, and I'll talk about it, because I think it's important, but it goes hand-in-hand hand with what I'll talk about as far as content creation um, and the 52-week challenge, um, and that will get you on your way to being a content creator for your market and start getting some traffic. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we have an E, we have a C, a C, a C, a C. All right, so C wins for right now. Uh, all right, so let's, uh, let's do it. All right, so let me go ahead and put this up here, all right? And then let me get over to my thingy here. All right, cool. All right, so you guys can see my screen. All right, cool. So. All right, when, when we're first starting, okay, we want to think about our market as far as what they are searching for, but into categories or into buckets, okay? And if we look at this right here, this is the first thing that I'm looking at because it's low-hanging fruit. And what I mean by that is we wanna start looking for questions that our market is asking, okay? Now, I don't care if you sell a garlic press that means that people are looking to cook meals that use a garlic press. So maybe it's Italian cooking, and then you're going to be like uh, answering questions about like, um, let's see, uh, let's see, why does, uh, why does my pizza get burnt? 
right? Or how to, and that's a how to, but it's actually a question, how to stop my pizza from burning in the oven, right? That's a question that someone that probably is cooking uh, and possibly using a garlic press in your market would need to would need to know, right? Now, you're gonna be limited if all you do is produce content around a product. That's why we wanna have our market identified and then they're just gonna be led to products or other products. And the cool thing about when you're doing content is you're not really, you're not really, um, I guess, uh, stuck with only talking about those products, right? You can talk about a whole bunch of different products or not products at all. You can just talk about how to do stuff and then when people go there, you'll give them value and then they can click on other ads or, you know, other things that are on the site. But I love starting with questions because there's a ton of questions with a lot of, with a ton of, um, of keywords there. So if you were to start doing a search in Google for, can you catch bass in a pond, right? You're going to start to get answers. And then from there, you're going to also see other suggestions of what other questions are being asked in that market around that keyword. So I always tell people, create a list of, uh, of different keyword ideas. And you know, it's just like Amazon or eBay or Etsy. Everyone is searching for things using search terms, keywords. So we want to start figuring out what does our market want to know more about, or what are they struggling with or what will help them? You know, um, can I use, right? And then you would fill in the blanks. And so for guitar, can I use steel strings on an acoustic guitar? Well, of course you can, but you know, you see what I'm saying, right? Like you're asking a question and then you're going to get an answer. And that answer would not just be two words that say yes, or three words, yes, you can. It would be more of the, um, the quick answer, but then you would elaborate on that answer. So questions are a big one. And that's usually the one that we start to set the foundation and we start to send, um, different articles out there in, in the, uh, in the internet world that will lead people over to the site. So a lot of times too, they're, they're not as competitive. Okay. So this is what I would recommend doing is coming up with three buckets. Okay. Of of uh, content ideas using those right there. Questions, and then how-tos, and then products, okay? So how-tos could be like how to play, uh, let's see, uh, smoke on the water on guitar, right? That would be a how-to. Well, guess what? If someone is searching for how to play smoke on the water on guitar, they probably are a guitar player and you probably sell guitar stuff, or you could link them over to more guitar stuff. See how that works? So we have questions, we have how-tos, and then we have product-based uh, content posts, okay? The products would be like uh, best steel strings for acoustic guitar, right? And then you would write a post that would cover the different types of strings that would be good for an acoustic guitar. If someone is searching for that and they find it, they are searching to buy products. They are going to find those products on your website. From there, they will be linked over to either Amazon or your own products, okay? So that's it in a nutshell, guys. Doesn't have to get complicated. Now, if you are, and let me see if I can do this here on the fly. Let me do something here for you. We'll, we'll make this into a little bit more of a lesson if we can, if I can do this. Let me see here. Uh, let's see. I'll give you guys a little resource here. L let me know in the, in the comments too, guys, if this is making sense. Just let me know if this is making sense, if you have any questions on this, and then I'll come over and I will address those. So let's see here. Hopefully this will load while I'm on with you guys. Uh, let's see. Let's do... can spell. <laughs> okay. All right. Bear with me guys. Hopefully this is going to work and I can show you what I'm doing here. 
I might just take a second, take a sip of coffee while we're waiting or tea or juicer, whatever you're doing. We're going to let this run. It's taking a minute. I'll show you what I'm doing here in a minute. Uh, let's see. And while I'm letting that load, there's something loading in the background. So I just want to be careful. I'm not choking the feed here. Let's see. Uh, Kim, by the way, thanks to Sean for introducing me to your Take Action Effect book. Ate it up. Awesome, Kim. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for grabbing a copy. Uh, let's see, Robin. For the product bucket, how do you do those posts for product review slash comparisons? Well, number one, Robin, what you would do is you would actually have the products, okay? So if you if you either have the products, you could do that, or you could... Um, you could reach out to, to the different companies that you want to review their products and ask them to send you a free one. You can do that. Or you can just look through the, um, the reviews of the different products and you can give like a condensed version of what, what all of the reviews are saying, right? And then just use that as a comparison. Um, but a great way to do it would be for you to actually have three of the different ones that you're going to be comparing. And then you would give your own feedback or you would have other people um, write about it. And uh, I mean, we have people that are doing this right now in the niche that you know, the niche that we're, that we're building this in. And uh, we're not actually taking the products and doing the comparisons. We're just hiring a writer that will do the research to find the pros and cons. And Kate says, very helpful. Cool. All right. Let me see if this thing loaded up for me and I'll show you what I'm doing here. Yeah, man, it's, uh, it's, not, really, uh, it's not really working that well for me here. I might not be able to show you. Oh, okay, it did. Perfect. All right, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and share this over now. Let's let's remove this and then let's uh let's add a different thing. I'm going to go here. Bear with me, guys. All right. So I'm going to go here. And tell me if you can see that. I'm going to remove that. Cool. Okay, I think you can. All right. So basically I'm here at, um, it's basically called answer the public. Okay. And oh, this is showing up here. I don't want that. Okay. There we go. Um, electric guitar. Okay. So all I did is I typed in a very, uh, it's, it's somewhat niche down because it's not just guitar, it's electric guitar. And then from there, what I'm doing is I'm getting a lot of these ideas here, right? So let me see if I can pull this up and make it bigger so you guys can see. Yeah, so see, inside of here, they're just putting a word in front of electric guitar. So if I scroll over here, zoom up here, so I'm in this area right here, okay? So can electric guitar strings be used on an acoustic? Can electric guitar sound like acoustic? Can electric guitar play without amplifier? Can electric guitar work without amplifier? Can electric guitar amps be used with an acoustic? See what's happening? That's just in adding the can, right? Now, how about this? Uh, let's see. How long will electric guitar last? So, uh, will I, oh, now that one's not good. Will you, or musician, that's different. Electric guitar will not stay in tune. So that's just a simple search. Um, how much are electric guitar lessons? How much are electric guitar strings? What are electric guitar power cords? What are electric guitar pedals? So look at this, guys. I'm just starting. Then we have the how. We add the how in here. We have here. Um, when to start playing electric guitar? When to learn electric guitar? When to buy electric guitar? All right, how about this one? Which electric guitar to choose? Which electric guitar for small hands? Which electric guitar brand is the best? Which electric guitar is best for small hands? That's a good one. I never even thought about that. So you see what I'm doing here, right, guys? Like, that's it. I'm just exploring. And all I did was went to answer the public, and I searched for one little keyword. And then all this came back, okay? So does that make sense? Are you guys, are you guys getting this? Does this make sense? Uh, let's see. Kim says, uh, just so I understand what... You just said, Scott, you have researchers reading through online reviews and then compiling them into posts. Yeah, pretty much. Yep, we are definitely doing that, without a doubt. 
without a doubt. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is a good one. Michael, what's up, Michael? How does Google actually rank your blog post? I know it takes time, but it's a matter of Google just crawling your website and showing it to people and and, uh, and record page view time. Kinda. Um, it is a set and wait stage. It, it totally is. Um, let me move this off of there just for now. It is It is definitely a, uh, you know, sit and wait, okay? And like right now, we've been publishing content on, uh, on well, on a few different sites, but on one in particular, let's see if I can get a little more light in there. Um, and we have some right now that are probably ranking in the, I'd say in the top 20. And some of them are in like page two from 11 to 20. And it's just a matter of time before you get like this hockey stick that they're going to all of a sudden take off. Right. Um, but it is, you have to set it. Now the, the, the idea here is that you want to make sure that at first you're not overcomplicating it where you're just like, I got to find the best keywords. And if they're not matching these, uh, metrics, then I'm not going to, to do these, right. I'm not going to create content around those. That's not the idea. Our first like 70 posts on this brand that we're building inside of Brand Creators Academy, inside of that, uh, we never looked at any data really other than uh, at first we just looked at the questions that made sense that we knew were being searched for. Some of them might have only, they might have only said they got 10 searches a month, but we all know, at least I do and a lot of people that are doing this know, and you guys will know now, you can't just go off of like numbers that are in keyword search uh, tools. Um, they're not accurate. Okay. It does give you a good idea, but it's not hundred percent accurate, but you gotta, at first you can't let that stop you in the, in the, in the beginning, it's about getting content out there. Um, and I like to get it out there as quick as possible. Obviously you want it to be written well, or you want it to be a good video or whatever, but you don't want to overcomplicate it. Uh, yes, Kim, no problem. Yes. Check it out guys. I'm telling you like, check this out. Like, let's go back there real quick. Now, I'm not seeing any numbers here as far as like, oh, how many searches does something get, right? Um, let me do one other thing here. Let me see. Um, hang with me, guys. If you have any questions, guys, put them in the comments. I'm going to be here for a little while longer. So just drop them in the comments. Let me know. And oh, if you guys are finding this value valuable, do me a favor. If you're on Facebook, smash the like button, comment as much as you can share this with someone or people that you think would get value, spread the love. If you're on YouTube, same thing, subscribe to the channel, uh, do whatever you do on, on YouTube. I think you, uh, you hit, is there a like button there or just a, a thumbs up, a thumbs up, thumbs up. Yeah. Give it a little love. I'd appreciate it. Um, but I want to share something else with you guys because we can take this a step further, but let me do something here. And I just, I don't want to do too much cause I don't want it, this to choke um, the feed here. So let me see. Yeah, that was a good one. I want to look at this one here. Uh, let's see. Where was that one about small hands? Uh, let's see. Hang on here. This is kind of weird that I'm doing this like on the fly with you guys. And it seems like I'm making you wait and I don't mean to. So just chill for a minute. Uh, take a sip of coffee. Ask a question. Uh, take a little bit here. Um, let me see here. All right. Let's just go with this one. Let's just do this one. Okay. So let's do this. And I hope that this doesn't slow things down, but let's just see. I just want to give you an example of some of the process here. And again, I go through all of this inside of, um, the free resource, the brand growth validation checklist. So you can guys, you guys can go through that. It's totally free. Just go to brandcreators.com. Uh, and once this loads, we might have some data that I can share with you and we can. Okay, cool. All right. All right. 
Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna share this with you. So now I'm in Uber Suggest, okay? This is a free tool, they have a free version and they also have a paid version. But all I'm doing here now is I'm just looking at this keyword, can electric guitar sound acoustic? So it's a very long tail keyword. It says it only gets 20 searches a month. I don't personally believe that, but whatever, okay? Um, but if that's the case, I still would create this because I'm sure that my, you know, my audience or my market would probably, someone in the, mar in the market would ask for this question. So I'd wanna answer it. So the other thing that you can do now that we kind of have can and electric guitar, I can just go here, take out some of those keywords, go a little bit more broad, and then let it tell me some other suggestions just to keep kind of mining for different keywords using Ken Electric Guitar and then see what happens, right? So see now down here, electric guitar pickup, 1300. How does an electric guitar work? Now we're at 480 searches per month. How much does an electric guitar cost? 480. That person's looking to buy one, by the way. How much does an electric guitar weigh? 70. How does an electric guitar pickup work? 70. Um, so those are just some examples, right? So that's, again, that's a little bit even further down the line. I wouldn't even get there yet. I would go here and I would look at ones that you could probably create very easily or have someone do it um, because uh, this way here, you're just putting out there the questions that people are asking in your market and then you're gonna start showing up everywhere and they're easier to rank for, okay? So again, if I go back here, the other thing I'm looking at is this right here. And again, I'm not gonna get too much in the weeds here for Uber Suggest, but if I look at this right here, how does an electric guitar work? 480 searches. And some people would be like, well, Scott, that's not a lot of searches. I'm here to tell you that with 480 searches, you're gonna get a lot more than that, not just for that keyword, but for does an electric guitar work, uh, whatever, um, in, I don't know, a basement. I don't know. I'm just making up stuff, right? Like you're going to, you're going to start getting other phrases from that same keyword, but here's what I'm looking at this here, this SD, this is site, um, di or SEO difficulty. This, this is very low. So that means that I'd probably be able to, um, I'd probably be able to rank for this without a lot of effort. So now what I do is I look over here and I look at this, I go, Oh, wait a minute here. This site, number four, guitarkitworld.com, they're getting 31 visits from that keyword, technically, I think they're probably getting more. They have zero links, their domain score is low, and they have zero shares. So this gives me uh, like proof that I don't need to have a big authoritative website to rank for a keyword like that that has potential to get some views, right? So that's all that I'm doing there, is I'm just reverse engineering. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this, Guitar Kit World. I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna bring up this site. That site gets 18,167 monthly organic searches. And that, honestly, that is not even accurate. And I know this for sure because our site that we have that I mentioned that is getting um, 150,000 to 200,000 right now sessions uh, per month, uh, we are only showing that we're getting 7,000 monthly organics according to Uber Suggest. So I know it's way off but it still gives us an idea that this here, this site with a domain score of three, okay, is ranking for 12,000 organic keywords. It has 681 backlinks, which no follow links is 566, but look at that. And the no follow stuff, again, we're getting a little technical here, guys. I don't want anyone worrying about this stuff, but this is what we do as far as reverse engineering um, if we're able to go out there and compete in a market and then what content we should create um, after we start that ball rolling. Um, and we do have um, inside of Brand Creators Academy. We go through all of this stuff. We actually have deep dive sessions that we're going through this. I know Robin's on with us and we've done one for her. Um, and, um, and that's what we're doing. Um, but any questions on this so far, guys? Uh, let me go ahead and uh, remove that there. And I'm gonna remove that. Uh, and Kim. Let's see. All right, cool. Um, yeah, Jamie makes a good point. Can take around six months to get content ranked depending on the niche and competition of search topic. Absolutely 100%. And we're actually seeing that right now. 
um, in the in the uh, brand that we're that we're building as a case study inside of the academy, um, we're starting to see that little bit of hockey stick. Um, we started probably five months ago um, actively posting, and we're just now starting to see every day a little bit more, a little bit more. Last month we had over a hundred. Um, it was actually about 102% increase in organic. And this month we're on track to even do more. Um, so you're just starting to get that effect um, and over time. And you never know, like one of those posts could all of a sudden start being a main uh, post that starts bringing in thousands of visits as you start to rank up. Um, but yeah, um, let's see here, Kim, that is where I get stuck. Worrying about keyword search numbers. So happy you give us permission to just mark ahead, or march ahead and um, kind of use our own intuition as far as interest level about topics. Yes, absolutely. But the other thing that you can do is, let me show you another example here, and I'll do this for you, Kim, but anyone else that is uh, thinking about this, right? So let me show you guys this. Let me go share my screen again. All right, so we're back over here. So now check this out. Can electric guitar sound acoustic, right? Well, if I look down here, look at, People also asked, do electric and acoustic guitars sound the same? What does my electric guitar sound, or why does my acoustic, or electric guitar sound acoustic? It's harder to play acoustic or electric guitar. Can you play an acoustic electric guitar without plugging it in? There's right, there's four posts that Google is saying, those are what other people asked when they asked this question, okay? So again, you can learn just from that, all right? You can go to YouTube and you can start exploring that, right? Um, so there's so much that you can do just with the free resources. So look at this, um, can an electric guitar, look at be played without an amp shock you sound like an acoustic, uh, guitar amp be used for an acoustic, be played like an acoustic amp be used for bass, get wet, be plugged into a computer, be plugged on a bass. just from that one search guys. These are suggestions that are being, um, given to you from Google alone. So in the beginning, do not worry about the numbers, okay? Worry about if it makes sense for your market, but that's why you do need to understand your market and you need to understand what the market is searching for. And you also wanna know before you do any of this stuff, if there's monetization opportunities out there for you, is there enough traffic? Is there, is there other, other websites that have already done it that you could kind of model and look at and go, oh, they've already kind of validated it for me. And if again, if you guys have not went through um, that resource, which I'll give you guys that here again, brandcreators.com. It's our brand growth validation checklist. It's totally free. Now, if you want to kick it up a notch and you want to go through the entire process, I mean, all the way through the process, brandcreatorsbook.com will walk you through that. And it will literally cost you less than five bucks, um, for that book. So if you're interested, you can grab that. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot there we can, we can do. Um, but you don't want to overcomplicate this process. All right. So any other questions on that? Let me go back to this real quick. Let me remove that. Uh, was that helpful guys? Was, give me a thumbs up or give me something. Let me know if that was helpful. Uh, and let me share, let me share that other screen here. So again, make sure that you do this right here. Make sure that you get your three content buckets. Make sure that you fill one bucket with questions, one bucket with how to's and one bucket with products. All right. And again, if you go through the brand growth validation checklist, it will help you with this right here. Cause that's what we're doing. First, we're validating that you can even fill these buckets. And then from there, we're, we're, um, figuring out where to go find, um, the information to fill these buckets. Now, the last thing I want to talk about here before we wrap up this part of this call is the 52 X content strategy. All right. And basically what this is, okay. Is this is something that you could just say, you know what? I'm not going to overthink this thing. I'm going to create one piece of content every single week for one year for 52 weeks. That is it. Now, if you guys missed the episode I did with Jesse from Still It on, uh, he has a YouTube channel, which I just had him on as a guest on uh, Brand Creators Academy as well. And he, um, he went through this whole 52X challenge, um, which I kind of uh, 
I kind of named it that because that's what he did. After he was listening to my podcast, he was like, I don't want to launch a physical product right now. Too risky for me, but I do want to get started doing this content thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm just going to take action. Like Scott says, and I'm going to create one piece of new content every single week. And the thing is, is he's not an expert at it either. And what he does is he distills alcohol and talks about that type of stuff. And so he was learning it and he's like, as I'm learning it, I'm going to go ahead and document my journey. That's what I'm going to do. He's built up his subscriber base to over, uh, I believe it's over 50,000 now. Whenever he releases a video, he gets five to 6,000 views within 24 uh, to 36 hours. He actually posted a video the day that we did an interview with him. I had him on as a guest inside of the Academy. And um, the day that we went uh, live on that, he, he uploaded a video that morning it had like 800 views within like an hour. And then it got over 25,000 views within like a day and a half. And, uh, and right now it's probably well over 30,000. Um, so again, the 52 X content strategy is taking what you have in your buckets and pick one piece of content every single week. Now, one last thing that I will say here, part of this is create a schedule. Okay. And commit to it. Okay. So maybe that's every Monday release new content. Okay. So basically do this right here. Okay. Let me make that a little bigger for you. Right. Do that right there. Create a schedule and commit to it. Basically, Tell yourself, when is the day that you're going to publish content and nothing gets in its way. All right. But that's why we got to do this stuff up front because we don't want to be sitting around. Oh, what, what should I create today? <clears throat> what should I create? You want to have that stuff done. So then you are ready to create that content. Or if you want to have someone else do it, you can totally have that done too. In this brand that we're building inside the Academy, we haven't written one piece of content ourselves at all. And we've done over a hundred articles now. Okay. Um, we're having someone write them and they're doing a great job. All we're doing is optimizing them and, um, you know, basically getting them ready for search. And, uh, and, and from there, we're just driving our own email list to it. Cause that's another part of our strategy is building the email list and then driving traffic to the email list or from the email list over to the content to amplify it. So that's what we're doing, but you got to have the content first. But even before that, you got to validate that you can even do this in your market. Because if you are, if you're selling, water softener things, right? Like, I don't know if you have a market that you can build a whole bunch of content. If you only have a few things that you can write about in that market, and then it just kind of dies off. Like what else are you going to do? Right? So you got to figure that stuff out first. Um, and that's why it's important to go through that validation process. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, cool. Thank you. Daily jerk daily. <laughs> nice. Um, Kim says, thanks for sharing that Google additionally questions asked tip. Great. Awesome. Uh, Helene is doing, is definitely doing the challenge. She's also in the Academy. Uh, so that's cool. And I saw, it, um, that was awesome. Chasing the craft. Yes. Chasing the craft is what he pivoted to. It was initially, and this is the other thing, guys, when you start, it might pivot. Um, he basically started it. It was named still it. And now he has, he has since pivoted to where it's called chasing the craft. So this way here, he doesn't have to only be talking about, uh, distilling alcohol. It can be about chasing any craft, right? So it's maybe making homemade, uh, beer, wine, cheese, beef jerky, doesn't matter. There's a craft and he can now talk about that. So just a little, uh, a little thing there. Um, Oh, Michael. You mentioned building a content tree a while back. How do you structure that with your blog posts? Um, I love that question. Um, and I did do a full episode on that. And I probably should do, I've got my whiteboard over here. I should probably do a whiteboard video on that as well. Inside of the Academy, I do go over this. So um, if you are in the Academy and you're watching this, you probably either, either seen it. If you haven't, then go through that video that I shot doing that. But basically what we are doing, you know what? I got to get a whiteboard um, that I can draw on for these lives as well. That would be helpful. Huh? Hmm. All right. I don't have that right now, but let me go over to my little, uh, doc here and see. So basically 
what we're talking about here is um, the content tree, right? So basically what this looks like, and I can't draw it on here, but I can do this, okay? So basically what it looks like is uh, when you have something, uh, so let's say like it's um, how to catch more bass, right? That's the question. And then that's a pillar post, right? So maybe inside of that one post, so let me just put here uh, pillar post. Okay, that's our, that's our, oops. Um, that is our, uh, our main, like, our main tree, uh, you know, like our, our main trunk, right? And then what we want to do is we want to have branches off of that. So these would be individual posts. So these are uh, support posts. Oops. Right? So in these support posts, these are going to look like, um, can you catch bass in pond, right? That's a question. Okay, let me do another one here. Oops, I just copy and pasted that. I don't want to do that. All right, and then what I want to do, oops, let's see. In a lake. All right, you get the idea, right? And then let's go here. And again, I don't even know if you can. I don't think you can in a river, right? Bass aren't in a river. But let's just say that people were still asking that question. Um, oops. Um, right. So again, don't judge me on my bass fishing skills, guys, okay? Just so I can kind of demonstrate the point here. So what's going to happen here is this is a pillar post. In that pillar post, it's how to catch more bass. In there, you're probably going to mention that you, if you're if you're fishing in a pond, this is how you catch more bass. If you're fishing in a lake, this is how you catch more bass. Um, if you're thinking that you can catch bass in a river, you're wrong. You can't. Like whatever it is, right? So in that in that pillar post, the big post, right? That might be three to five thousand words, or maybe it is a video, a long in depth video that you do. It's going to talk about all of those other supporting posts. And then you would link over to those as you're talking about those. Now, again, I don't want to get too technical here. It's not, and it's not as important, but what you do want to do is you want to have these content trees. And basically what happens then is everything is kind of like nested into one area where then you start bouncing around to different posts as you mention those. So we call that interlinking and it also allows people to stay on your website longer, right? So these posts here, these are going to be shorter. These are going to be maybe 1500 words, 2000 words, whatever they need to be. And in that, it directly answers that question. But then also in that post, you're probably mentioning about how to catch more bass. And then it would link over to the pillar post. So that's what we're doing there, right? So this is a, a good example. And I would, I mean, we just did one of these uh, that has 17 different supporting posts that match up to this one right here, this big pillar post. And uh, it's funny because in, in the academy, we just, I, I just basically went through this content tree strategy about, I don't know, not even a month ago. We've already written all the content. It's already been published. And now we're going to report back and see um, how things are, how things are moving and how things are working. Um, but again, that's, that's what it comes down to in the beginning is not overthinking it and just creating and, you know, learning as you, as you, uh, as you do, right. Not just like, Oh, I hope this post is perfect. I don't know if it's right. I don't know if I did the keyword research, right. I don't know if I linked things right. I don't know if I have the best title. I don't know if I have the best images. You got to get out of your own way. You got to just start posting. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Uh, so let me go back over here, here here and let's see uh let's see let me know if you're putting together any road trips to new zealand <laughs> not right now uh not with the travel thing but um would love to go to new zealand uh sounds sounds fun uh for sure so guys any other questions on the content side of things i know we went for a while here um and do you still want me to jump into some email stuff 
because uh, I got something I wanted to share with you quickly, even if it's just quickly. Uh, let's see here. Hold on one second, guys. Again, guys, if you have any questions while I'm on here, let me know. I want to help you guys. Um, and one question I want to ask you guys, are, are, you, are you convinced that you should be creating content for your brand? Like, yes or no? Like, are you convinced that you should be creating content for your, for your brand? And I'm just curious. Um, let me look at something real quick. And then I'm going to share something with you, which is mind blowing. And also why it's kind of like a two prong approach when we're building a brand and what we, uh, what we teach, um, and what we're doing. So it's not just, we're teaching it, we're actually doing it. Uh, let's see. Okay. A lot of yeses. I like that. Uh, yeah. Hey, Mike. Yeah, there there will be a replay. Uh, and Mike, I you you're in the academy, so if you have any questions, brother, just hit me up, man. You you know how to get a hold of me. Um, but yeah, um, I'm gonna be actually actually as soon as I get off of here, I'm gonna be jumping in the academy, and I want to do a small session there um, for one of our members that uh, just posted their first uh, three blog posts, I believe. I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a little deep dive and do a little critiquing um, just to give him a little bit of a bump. Um, but anyway, uh, let me go back to what I was doing here Man, it's easy to get distracted because I'm trying to share, um, on here and don't want to choke this feed. Okay. All right. So let me, um, let me write this real quick. Okay. Bear with, bear with me guys. I, 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 Promise that this will be worth it. Um, email. Uh, let's see. Um, oops, man. I need to learn how to type. <laughs> All right. I'm typing this so you guys can see it once I share. Okay. I think I got it now. All right. All right, here we go. And I'm going to do the stats here. Uh, order. And then let's see. And then it's... Uh, Okay. Okay. So let me share my screen again. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. So email, let's talk about email. All right. This is why I'm such a huge, huge fan of email and anyone right now that is not number one, building a list or two, not, um, using their list. Listen up, okay? Here's the deal. Okay, we just, and I say this was a test, but it was really just, it was something that we, we send out three emails a week to this one brand um, on a regular basis, okay? And this is, I, I changed it to, to what our niche is, so just bear in mind, I'm just changing this, but the rest of this is pretty much the same. So this this was the subject line, okay, that I just sent out, a uh, day and a half ago. Okay. New bass fishing tip plus surprise. Okay. And what I, what had uh, happened here is within the first, I'm going to go over here real quick. I'm going to give you exact numbers within the first 24 hours. We had a 15.8% open rate from 35,520 people. We had a click-through rate of 5.1%, which is 1,987 clicks, okay? So what that means is I sent out a post or a, an email, 
And I got 15.8%, almost 16% of people to open, which in the email uh, marketing world is very, very good. Okay. Um, so now you would say, okay, well, that's great and all, but how many people actually went over to your website? 1,987 people clicked on a link within 24 hours, guys, okay? And out of that email send, we only got 17 unsubscribes, which you guys know how I feel about unsubscribes. Whenever I get unsubscribes, I'm like, thank you for doing that because you're helping me save money on my list. I only want to communicate with people that actually want to communicate with me and, and the brand, right? But here's the interesting thing, okay? And this is a big tip that I just gave the other day on the last call. I'm going to give it again here because if you're not doing this, you need to do this. Okay. This morning I had my cup of coffee and as I had my cup of coffee, I went into my convert kit account and I looked at the email and I was like, holy cow, we had over 1900 clicks on that email. That is phenomenal. Right. But as usual, I need to send to the unopens. Now, if you're not sending to the unopens, big wake up call here, send to your unopens, do it immediately. Okay. You're, you're leaving, uh, you're leaving traffic on the table. All right. You are now just from this morning alone. Now this was, uh, at nine Oh three AM and here it is one o'clock. So what's that three, four hours ago. All right. I sent out to the unopens that did not open that first email. Okay. I got an extra 4.3% open rate already. And out of the, I got a 1% click through rate already of 317 people. So now we went from 1987 clicks on the first email to sending to the unopens. We've added 317. We're at 2304 for clicks. Okay. So that means that, uh, this morning, just from sending that to the unopens. Okay. And I was trying to find that number. Where the heck is that number? Uh, let's see. I might be able to go into, where is it? Right here. That's it. Yeah. 1300 people. I was trying to do the math on that. So 4.3%. So I would have not reached 1300 people if I did not send that email to the unopens this morning. Okay. In four hours, I had 1300 people open an email that I would have just said, ah, oh, they're not interested. They're not going to open my email, right? 1300. Okay. Now that's going to go up because I, I would normally be doing this like a day later and I would share that number with you, but this is only four hours ago. Now I did this on other emails. I did another one here uh, the other day and we had a, an overall on the second email sent. We had a 7.6% open rate and a 0.9%. So 406 clicks. So this email is actually doing better, right? Um, but let me give you um, what this looks like. So inside of here now, what you would do is this is like email number one. So email uh, number one was that subject line, okay? And then sent to on opens. And this is, uh, I'll put here email number two, right? Sent to unopens. And what that looks like for a subject line was this. All right. I'm, I'm looking at this so I can, okay. So basically I did another surprise plus, and all I did was just turn it around new bass. Oops. Fishing tip. That was it. That's all I did. Okay. So all I did was I took this email, new bass fishing tips, plus surprise, smiley face, second email to un unopens. I just turned it around. I went, Another surprise plus new bass fishing tip. That's it. And this here now, 1300 people read it. Okay. And then 300 and I think it was 17 clicked. Okay. So that's, that's the power of that. So now overall we've had over 2,300 right here, 2,304 people. Okay. So 
It's crazy. Do you have any questions on that? Before we move on. Uh, cool. A lot of yeses here. Got here. Okay. That was Mike. Uh, does, okay. That's a blog question. I'm going to answer that in a minute, Kate. Uh, yeah. Okay. Kim. Yeah. I think I addressed that for you. Did you change anything in the subject line or elsewhere when you resent to the unopens? And the answer is, uh, yes, I changed it a little bit. We always change it a little bit because here's the deal. Some people might've seen the email, but they didn't open the email. And that could be just cause they're busy. They're not ready to open it. They don't have the time to open it, whatever. And then you're going to pop back up in their feed. It's going to get their attention because it's not the same email in a sense. And they're going to, that might catch their attention. So yes, the answer is we do change that. And yes, I did say that 1300 more people opened the email. So I'm going to, I'll do something here. Uh, so the first email, uh, let me go into these numbers. Let's see. Uh, okay. The first email was opened by 5,623 people. Okay. Just let me do something here real quick. I'm not good at math. Um, I'm good at calculating like basic math, but, uh, I'm not like, uh, not like a math student, um, 5623. And that, so the first email got 5,623. Okay. Opens. And then we added another 1300. So we're almost at 7,000 people now. Okay. And out of those 7,000 people, we had over 2,300 of them click over to our website. And what this does is this, this increases our sales on our own products. It also increases our ad revenue on our site because people are now visiting the site, right? And we get credit for any time someone shows up to the site. And then we have a chance for them to buy uh, one of our digital guides. We have a chance for them to buy an affiliate product, all of these different opportunities because we drove people over there. So this is why I'm such a huge fan of creating content because we create the content, we post it on our blog, or we put it up on YouTube. We have an email list. We take the email list. We let them know about the new content. And then that way there, we get traffic over there instantly. And that helps to also get the ball rolling. So that's why we like doing it that way. Um, so hopefully that helped. Let me go over here. Um, do, do, do. And Kim says, wow. Yes, it is wow, right? So, okay. Um, if you guys, uh, don't have any other questions, we've been on here for over an hour now. Um, and I don't want to make this go too long. Uh, and I have one more, uh, one more live. I got to do inside of our Academy that I wanted to do. So I'm going to do that next. Um, but yeah, guys, if you have any questions, let me know in the meantime, I would definitely go here. Brandcreators.com. Also, if you are, uh, if you are watching this before April 6th, um, so if you're watching this live, obviously you are, if you're watching this after the fact, um, it may or may not be April 6th is when we're opening brand creators Academy for a week. Um, we're only opening enrollment like four times a year to the Academy. So we can uh, dedicate all of our time and energy to helping those students, um, and not promoting it. Um, so we open it up about four times a year. Um, April 6th is going to be opening. If you get the, um, the free checklist brandcreators.com, if you get that, you'll also be notified when we open enrollment early. Um, so this way here, you guys, um, have an opportunity to join if you're interested. Um, but that's where we're inside helping brand creators build brands and, um, and doing it ourselves. And I actually have another case study brand that we're going to start building here shortly. Um, and I'm really excited about that. And, uh, it's going to follow the same exact model, um, same process. So we're just going to be like six to seven months behind the one that we just started. So we're always going to have like a brand that we're building. That's kind of like in beginning stages, we're working it up to six, eight months and then continuing to grow it. And then the other one will now will be, uh, you know, a month or I'm sorry, a, a year out, two years out, and we can start to document these different case studies. I um, mean, that's really what we're doing there. Um, so yeah, no problem. Uh, Kim, no problem at all. It, this was fun. All right. So guys, I think that is going to wrap this up. Um, if you guys have any other questions and it's after the fact, if you're watching this on the uh, replay, um, just let me know in the comments and do me a favor. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. So this way here, you don't miss any of the upcoming uh, lives that we do or any videos. I'm going to be posting more videos. I'm um, actually today. I already posted a new video um, and that one there. Uh, is covering, what one is covering there? Oh, I know what it is. Nine subject lines.
to increase your open rates. So you guys might want to watch that one actually. Um, so if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll find that video. It's today's video and it's uh, nine subject lines to increase your open uh, rate for email. So definitely check that out. Sean, no problem. I appreciate you all the way from New Zealand, by the way, which is awesome. Uh, so awesome guys, that is going to wrap it up again. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, again, like this video, share this video, give it some love, drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you and let me know if you want me to do more of these again, I'm having fun doing these, but it's only if you guys are showing up and, um, and I'll keep showing up if you guys are uh, getting value from it. So, uh, that's it guys. That's going to pretty much uh, wrap it up as always guys. Remember, take care, take action. I'll talk to you soon.